Hey everyone, it's Gianni, a developer advocate here at Zoom, and I'm going to show you our Zoom public workspace on Postman. Now, our public workspace is a collection of curated API workflows for common Zoom developer use cases to build on one of the world's most powerful video communication platform, Zoom. We created this to help you get started fast with those Zoom APIs and reduce the time to first API call. We want to focus on building, so we hope that this makes it an easier process. In order to use this, you need to have an account on Postman, which is free, to sign up. And if you're not familiar with Postman, it's an API testing tool, among other things, and it's great. We love Postman over here at Zoom. You'll fork the Get Started Fast with Zoom APIs collection. Familiarize yourself with the collection variables. Blast off and explore the collection requests to create on the Zoom developer platform. And also, you can collaborate on improvements to the collection through pull requests and feedback. These other collections here are just all of our API endpoints across our different Zoom developer API products. So for example, Zoom Video SDK API, this is all of the API endpoints that are available. Same thing with meeting. We just figured it was nice to put it all in a centralized location that you can easily reference as you're developing across the Zoom developer platform. But again, this is the one that we want to focus on. Get started fast with Zoom APIs. And to fork it, you click on those three dots, hit create a fork, name it, and keep this checked. Watch original collection. This way, when there are changes, you can just pull the changes to your local version and always have the most up-to-date version. I've already done this. Let's take a look at the variables. Okay, also notice this documentation at the side to help support you as you're exploring across the different folders. Here are our current variables available throughout our curated API workflows. For example, you will have uh, the application credentials across different app types that are available, such as OAuth, JWT, Meeting SDK, Video SDK, etc. Now, as you can see in the pro tips, it's best to start with the API, excuse me, API authorization by app type folder, right? because you need to have access to the Zoom APIs to make requests to the Zoom APIs. This way we get an access token that we can use and um, with respect to its expiration time, of course, and start making some requests. The easiest one to do this with first is the OAuth app, and that is what we will be using in this demo. But as you continue to explore different Zoom app types, head over to the variables in your local version and start to replace the current value with those with that information so that is all centralized in one easy to use location. Let's head over to the fork version on my local account, my local Postman account. Now, as I mentioned, we will be using OAuth app. And as you can see, there's more documentation to support you. And there's different ways to get access to the Zoom APIs through OAuth, right? We have the easy OAuth method, standard OAuth 2.0 setup that mirrors our documentation, OAuth with Pixie. But right now we're going to go to the easy OAuth using the authorization tab within Postman. Ugh, I just love it. It makes it so easy. I've already done this setup here in my app, my OAuth app. As you can see, I don't have access to the API endpoints yet. Right? I have to actually add it to get that authorized access. Um, and in order for me to do so, it's time to get this access token. Now I'm gonna clear this one because this is a previous access token when I was testing, but everything is already set up for you. It's so easy, right? It's so easy, this is what we want. I've already put in my development client ID in secret within my collection variables, so that's already loaded. And now all I have to do is click get new access token, 
and this is the essentially giving me access to the API endpoints. I'm going to click allow this app to use my shared access permission. This is not required, but it is helpful for a number of reasons that are a bit more complex than what is relevant for this video for right now, but um, you may want to have that checked. Click allow. Authentication is complete, baby. Let's go. So hit proceed. And now I have my token. I'm going to grab it. This is something to keep private, but this will expire by the time you watch this video. Now, let's say I want to see what meeting templates I have available for my use throughout the platform. Right? I will have different meeting templates for different meeting types for my clients, et cetera. So I can go to this collection right here, list meeting and webinar templates. We're going to go to the list meeting templates right here. Um, we need to put in our new bureau token in order to actually request to that API endpoint. There's nothing special as far as parameters or headers and things like that for this endpoint, but I am going to change this value to me because I'm going, I'm looking at my own account. Otherwise, if you have access to other users on your account, or if it's a master sub account, you would put that particular user ID. Hit send. And, you know, I suspected that I didn't have any meeting templates, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to make this request. We have the successful status 200 OK response, meaning that everything is right and it returned an empty array. Like I said, I don't have any meeting templates, but I have access to the Zoom API endpoints, y'all. It was that easy. Now, as I mentioned before, you can also collaborate to make improvements to our public workspace. So say something was like kind of off about this particular request or maybe the folder, right? Notice this comment button. You could comment, you could say, hey, this should be, you know, I don't know, whatever, something different, right? You can add that comment. And then someone from the Zoom developer relations team who manages the workspace, such as myself, would see that comment and we can uh, integrate that feedback accordingly. Something else you can do is uh, make changes to your local version and submit a merge request. Now, we have this article here on Dev.2 that synthesizes essentially what I'm walking you through to today, but if you take a look at this uh, portion here, yeah, you see the option to merge changes, et cetera, et cetera. So take a look at that article. Like I mentioned, you can create a pull request, you can merge changes, you can pull changes, what have you. This is a way to stay up to date and collaborate with us on making this better. So. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you check out our, our other YouTube videos of the Zoom developer platform. We're super excited to be working with you on this and look forward to growing with you on the Zoom developer platform. Take care.